Hey, my name is Brad Veltman. I am a distance learning student out of Des Moines, Iowa, and today we're going to be talking about certificate authorities, digital certificates, and just kind of general trust issues with using uh, secure connections on, on the web. And I'm sorry, my first slide here is slightly misleading because you very well could suck. I don't really know you, uh, but I like to give you the benefit of the doubt. So, uh, first of all, we're going to go through a little bit of history here, just knock out some facts, uh, get everybody kind of on the same page. Uh, start out with public key infrastructures or PKIs. Uh, I'm not going to dwell on those too much. I'm going to mention them here a little bit because that's kind of the framework that that's going to be used to set up secure connections and things like that. Uh, but that's not really what the focus is here. I'm not going to focus a lot on the technical details of how uh, SSL and TLS actually work and how they secure connections. So I'm assuming most people in this class have a pretty good understanding of how that all goes down, um, at least you know from a basic level. If not, I'm sure a lot of you are, are pretty well versed in it as well. So I'm not going to focus a lot on that. Instead, we're going to be looking at trust issues of you know things like who who should you trust as far as digital certificates? Uh, do you just trust what your browser trusts? You know that type of stuff. So that's what we're going to be moving into here. Uh, but for the for this, uh, sake of the discussion here, public key infrastructures or PKIs were invented long before the you know the modern web as we know it, way back in 1969. So, yeah, Summer of Love, Woodstock, Jimi Hendrix, all that stuff going on. And these guys are working on public key infrastructures and mathematic algorithms. Awesome. Uh, but like I said, for our purposes, we're going to start with the invention of SSL by Netscape, which happened slightly before 1995 with version 1, but it was never actually released to the public, uh, presumably because it was crap. Uh, so it was just used internally within Netscape itself. We actually got version 2.0 in 95 for general use on the internet, uh, which 2.0 started out with a lot of security flaws and was quickly replaced by version 3 in 96. So 2.0 lasted about a year before it was, before its successor was released. Um, well, we'll talk about it in a little bit. 2.0 actually hung around a lot longer than you might think. Uh, but as far as 3.0 goes, there's still a ton of sites that use it today, which is kind of amazing when you think about, you know, this was this came out in 1996. And think about how rapidly technology changes and how much the, the Internet has changed. I mean, think about your typical website in 1996 compared to, you know, the large multimedia dynamically created on the fly web apps of today you know things have changed quite a bit but you know version 3.0 is stuck around and still being used and I'll, I'll show you a graphic later that kind of breaks down how many sites are using what version of SSL and TLS uh, but 3.0 was a complete redesign of 2 which is a good thing because like I said 2 had quite a few security issues um, and I, I've included the RFCs here kind of as just an FYI to you if you want to go out and look at them uh, like I said though we're not going to focus too much on the technical specs, so I'm not really going to be touching on those or getting into the RFCs themselves. They're just kind of there, but we probably won't talk about them very much. Uh, and over here I have this SSL certificate. I downloaded that from Fatolia. Uh, you can actually get that for use uh, on your own website if you want to by uh, purchasing a cert package through them. And I think it's like an extra 16 cents or something like that to get the, the graphic, which is uh, a pretty good deal. So moving on to TLS, uh, released in 1999, version 1, uh, which is not directly compatible with SSL, uh, but it contained a mechanism to uh, change your session over to SSL 3.0 if needed, but that of course weakens the security. Uh, version 1.1 came along in 2006, and 1.2 in 2008. Now that last point there is what's kind of amazing to me. Uh, version 1.2 was refined in 2011, removing backward compatibility with SSL 2.0. So that crappy, security, flawed protocol invented back in 1995 is still being supported, and version 1.2 just got rid of it last year. So that's a little bit frightening if you think about it, and it's not even really gone because that's just in version 1.2, uh, you know, version 1, 1.1, even SSL 3.0, all uh, presumably would support uh, backwards compatibility with that. So the reason that we care about this topic is because when we're talking about uh, encrypted connections, this is the 
you know, the basis for all security for any data in motion across the internet. So we're talking about millions of credit card transactions and personal information, financial information, health information that goes across the web every single day. And SSL and TLS are the bulk of what's protecting those things as they're moving across these, uh, um, you know, the hostile internet. Uh, one key step here that, that I do want to talk about in the SSL handshake <coughs> is the is the, when the server presents its digital certificate, which of, can, of course contains its public key. Uh, we're going to be talking a little bit about digital certificates here, so that's why I included that. Um, there's obviously a lot more to the handshakes, but I just want to include that the digital certificate is part of that. Public key is a, a very big portion of how it's set up uh, securely, but I'm going off the assumption that most of you watching this video, or all of you watching the video, have a pretty good knowledge of how that all works. Um, but, you know, obviously then this is what uh, is what we use for, you know, to create authentication, which is mostly on the server side. And by that I mean it's the word, the cert is on the server side uh, for verification, so you can go out to something like Gmail, <clears throat> and you can see their digital certificate, so you know that you're talking to Gmail. But they typically do not ask for your digital certificate back, uh, so that's what I mean by it's on the server side. Now, coincidentally, things like Gmail do use uh, other ways to track you. I mean, not directly, but in, in different ways, like uh, recording the last IP address you logged into and things like that. They also do two-factor authentication now where they'll send you a uh, pin to, uh, you know, over text message so that you have to enter that to get into uh, email, which I think is a good step forward, a pretty cool feature. So obviously digital certificates can also be used to create digital signatures for non-repudiation. Uh, and there's several other uses as well. Um, so we got a lot of security issues to consider now. Uh, there's lots of uh, things to trust between certificate authorities, um, you know, the actual certs themselves, uh, how your browser, if they're making the decision for you. Uh, as far as TAs go, I'm sure a lot of you have gone into and looked at the cert store in your browser or in Windows. You can see there's a lot of them already there just by default that you know your browser just implicitly trusts. Um, and so, you know, even using even those of us in security, if you've gone out there, you've seen how many there are. Uh, how many of us have actually looked at every single one of those companies and scrutinized their process to see that they're you know actually doing what they're supposed to be doing, things like that. Um, so really, most of us are kind of reliant on the browsers, or you know, in in the case of Internet Explorer, where it's we're uh, reliant on Microsoft to make some of those decisions for you. Uh, so that brings us to our first you know point of discussion of you know should we just rely on browsers to to do that trust for us? Should they be making those decisions? Um, you know they're doing it in in the for the sake of ease of use and that's how you know that's the reason that so many users can get on the internet and use it without even really paying that much attention to what's going on behind the scenes but you know is that really a safe thing to do do the browsers manufacturers really want to be doing that oh, and then we got other things to consider too like encryption algorithms key strength all that stuff so, you know, you start talking about stuff like that, and your typical user's head is just going to explode with that type of stuff. Um, so that's just kind of, you know, even more so kind of pushes them out of this decision-making process. They don't understand a lot of this stuff. They don't want to understand a lot of this stuff. They just want the Internet to work. So that's one of the main issues that, that we're going to cover here. So moving on to certificate authorities themselves. Uh, this screen grab here in the middle is directly from VeriSign's site, and they kind of make the exact same point that the author of Tangled Web makes. Uh, where in Tangled Web he said, uh, you know, most users don't know enough to use a browser securely on the internet, and VeriSign kind of agrees with them here because they say, uh, in case in case it's hard to read on the screen here, it says. Most website users do not know which certificate authorities to trust, so they rely on their web browsers to help them. Uh, and as as an aside here, that's kind of funny because you know you go to sites that are using VeriSign certificates, and 
you know, they'll usually splash up a little graphic somewhere or a little icon that says trusted by VeriSign or verified through VeriSign or whatever, you know, it's uh, just there to, to let you know that they're using VeriSign certs and everything, but by VeriSign's own admission here, the users don't really know who to trust anyway. So when they go to those sites and they see that graphic that VeriSign, you know, is securing the site or whatever, what does that even really mean to them? Because they don't, they don't even really understand who VeriSign is, what they're doing. Uh, so, you know, those graphics are kind of useless, really. But I just, I just kind of found that kind of fascinating. So again, not going to dive into the technical details here, but I'm going to do a little bit of an overview of the framework of how this works. Uh, their certificate authority themselves act as a trusted third party. So on the server side, there's obviously trust because they're using the digital certificate to secure their site. They've gone out and uh, purchased the digital certificate, gone through all the all the uh, process of verification so that they could get the certs from whatever certificate authority that they choose. Uh, on the client side, like we said, it's typically uh, for most people uh, there's trust um, based on well the browser trusts it, so implicitly or uh, indirectly so do I. Um, but basically the client then trusts the certificate authority to verify that the server on the other side of your encrypted connection is actually who they say they are. So really the certificate authority then is obligated to rigorously check the identity I, I'm sorry, excuse me, the identity of the person or organization requesting the certificate. So another interesting point of discussion, do most of them do this? I would say absolutely. Hopefully that's why they're they, you know they're still in business, right? Uh, do they all do it? Well, like we said, there's a lot of a lot of them out there. Um, even those of us that are interested in this kind of thing, uh, you know, even my research for this, I didn't go out there and scrutinize all of them to see whether or not they're doing a good job, whether or not I trust their processes, um, you know, that type of thing, or for that matter, whether or not I trust their security team so that their uh, CA servers don't get breached without them knowing and rogue certs get issued. Uh, so you know there's still a level of we kinda have to rely on somebody else to make these decisions for us and to be honest I really doubt any of the um, you know the Microsoft's the Mozilla's whoever are going out there and doing that too I'm sure they're doing a lot of research on these companies and stuff but are they really going to the depth of you know where they can absolutely without a doubt say yes we trust them and I really doubt that you know it really gets to that level so we're going to use Amazon as, a, as an example here. So looking at Amazon, we're going to look at it in three of the major browsers here. Uh, here I have a, an encrypted connection to Amazon, and I can tell that because I have HTTPS up in the address bar, and I've got the little lock icon here. Other than that, there's not a lot to tell me, especially because they don't have your handy little, you know, secured by VeriSign, you know, graphic splashed up right around here. So. This is really the only way I can tell in Internet Explorer. And if I click the lock icon, I get a little bit of information saying that there's a VeriSign cert here. Um, not a lot of information, but if I click View Certificate, then I can see a lot of the details uh, down to you know algorithms and hashes used and where it came from, the issuing server, uh, when it's valid from, and valid to, so all that type of stuff. So you can get a lot of detailed information here. Here's the uh, cert chain. So, and by the way, this is, in case you've never seen it, uh, which I'm guessing most of you have, this is just kind of the standard certificate view in Windows. So if I go now over to Chrome, Chrome, I think, does the best out of the uh, major browsers that I've been looking at here. Uh, I can see HTTPS in green and the green lock icon. The thing that I like about them, though, uh, well, first of all, this is a little bit easier in Internet Explorer. I mean, it's still not your typical user might see the green lock icon and feel pretty good. What I really like about Chrome, though, is when I click this, I get a little bit more information right up front here. I can see it's VeriSign. Uh, I can see what level of encryption, what version, a lot more information here without having to click through. The uh, thing that kind of surprised me, though, is if I click Certificate Information, it looks just like the one that came out of IE because Chrome actually just uses the Microsoft cert store as well, uh, but Firefox and Opera actually don't, um, which I'll show you Firefox here in a second.
But it looks like I'm coming up on my 15 minute uh, time limit here, so I'll continue the next part in part two. Thanks.